Hey, Lisa. Hey, Lee. It's good to see you today. <laughs> it's good to see you too. Will you help me with something? Of course. I can't remember what day it is. It's frontal lobe Friday. Good morning, my friend. I hope you're doing well. Dr. Lee Warren here with you, and it is frontal lobe Friday, one of my very favorite days of the week. And I'm excited because today my wife, Lisa, is coming home. She's been in San Antonio. We had three loved ones in hospice care at the same time. We lost one of those this week. We had a death in the family. We're going to be going back to Texas for a funeral next week. And Lisa's been away and Tata's been away. And she's been driving all over Texas, visiting relatives and spending time with people and, and dealing with that. And she's coming home today. So I'm always super excited when Lisa's coming home. And it's been one of those weeks where we had kind of like a Charles Dickens novel. We had the best of times and the worst of times. We had some really sad, difficult moments and some really sweet moments and some stressful things and some wonderful, rejuvenating things. And and so today on Frontal Lobe Friday, I want to just get your mind changed about one or two things. And the one big thing that I want to change your mind about, we're just going to talk for a couple of minutes today. I've got some incredible interviews today and some great podcast guests that are coming up. You're going to love it. But the one thing I want to kind of get on the table this morning is that there's always an opportunity whenever we're going through something to reduce it to a particular thing, a binary thing, a this or that, or the the defining thing, or to expand it and add context and nuance to it. And I just want to suggest to you today that a way to become healthier and feel better and be happier in general in your life, a way to honor God help other people find hope in the darkest moments is to become a people, a person who routinely learns to expand the situation in our lives, the way that we think, the way that we respond, the way that we react, the way that we attend to the universe, to expand it rather than contract it or reduce it. And we'll talk more about what that means in a moment. But before we get into Frontal Lobe Friday today, my friend, I have a question for you. Hey, are you ready to change your life? If the answer is yes, there's only one rule. You have to change your mind first. And my friend, there's a place where the neuroscience of how your mind works smashes together with faith and everything starts to make sense. Are you ready to change your life? Well, this is the place, Self Brain Surgery School. I'm Dr. Lee Warren, and this is where we go deep into how we're wired, take control of our thinking, and find real hope. This is where we learn to become healthier, feel better, and be happier. This is where we leave the past behind and transform our minds. This is where we start today. Are you ready? This is your podcast. This is your place. This is your time, my friend. Let's get after it. All right, my friend, here we go. So again, quick opportunity today to just change our mind about something. It's Frontal Lobe Friday. I want you to engage this incredible ability to selectively attend to something. And today, I just want to give you this concept of reductionism versus expansion. If you look at Western medicine, for example, for the last 50 years, the war on cancer is a good example. We've tried to reduce our view Our training in medical school, our practice of medicine in general has reduced everything down to a diagnosis, an underlying cause of that diagnosis, and to try to find the most essential way to treat that diagnosis to produce a cure for the patient. And sometimes that's led us to things that seem a little crazy. And the best example of that is in cancer care, where we develop these incredibly toxic treatments like chemotherapy and radiation with the goal of killing the cancer and trying to leave a little bit of human left alive at the end of it. And we consider it a victory if we kill the cancer cells and you still have enough skin and hair and bones and and blood cells to survive. And we consider that a victory. And sometimes it is. I'm not saying that that whole model is wrong. I'm saying that the approach has been one of kind of a, a, a balance of kill everything bad and hope that there's some good left over. And we've reduced the treatment of cancer in many cases down to this binary thing. Like, do we kill the cancer or do we not kill the cancer? But the truth is, if you look at this person, this whole human who has developed a cancer diagnosis, they're not just a group of cells that are bad and a group of cells that are good. And as long as we kill all the bad cells and have a few good cells left over, we've done the job and made the person well. 
because well doesn't necessarily just mean that you no longer have cancer. And I can prove that to you by saying this, all of the research, as we've talked about, continues to show that many people who develop cancer at the end of their fight with cancer, regardless of the outcome, find that they in in some ways have become grateful that they went through that experience. They find that that the hardship of the cancer that they went through proved to have benefited their life or their family or the way they think about things or their they found their faith or they fell in love or they reunited with a lost family member because of the problem instead of in spite of the problem. And that the hardship and the things they went through taught them something about themselves, that they found that they were more resilient or stronger than they thought, or that their marriage was stronger than they thought, or that their loved one who they never were 100% for sure, whether that person would stick with them through the hardest moments. And they did, and they showed up, and it turned out to be an incredible love story, even if the person dies of cancer. All this research has shown that people find meaning and purpose in hardship. And so you can't reduce that to just a binary choice of did this person survive or not. I remember the football coach of the LSU, uh, the University of Louisiana State University, LSU Tigers, Brian Kelly, a few years ago when they played Auburn. And they beat Auburn, but it was an ugly game and nobody played well. And it was a bunch of turnovers and, and a bunch of just disappointing plays. And both teams should have won that game in different ways. And I remember in the interview after the game, Brian Kelly said, somebody asked him about the way the game played out, and he said, hey, there are no pictures on the scorecard. There are no pictures on the scorecard. And what he means, he's referring to golf. If you've ever played golf, you have a scorecard, and you you write down the number of strokes that it took you to complete that hole, and the one with the lowest score wins at the end of the game. And there's no pictures. There's no explanation of how the hole played out. You, If you took four shots to get your ball in the hole, then that's a four. If you took 12 shots, then that's a 12. And if you've ever seen the crazy old Adam Sandler movie, Happy Gilmore, and I'm not advocating for Happy Gilmore. There's some language and some other things in it, so I'm not telling you to go watch it. But if you've seen it, there's a scene where a guy hits a golf shot and it bounces off a tree and hits a car and bounces up in the air and lands on a roof and rolls down a gutter and bounces off of somebody's leg and just goes all through these ricochets and all stuff and ultimately ends up rolling into the hole and he makes the putt to win the tournament. And that would be written down as a certain score. But if you just looked at that scorecard, you wouldn't see that that incredible shot had bounced all over the place and gone through all these unlikely things and somehow managed to find its way into the hole. You wouldn't see any of that information on the scorecard. You would just see the score. And so if you reduced the experience of that round of golf, if you reduce the experience of that football game down to the final score, then you would have no concept that a bunch of incredible things had happened. On Even that LSU-Auburn game, even though it was disappointing, there were some moments of exceptional performance and some great triumph and some good sportsmanship and some penalties and some, and some injuries. And, and it was just a whole incredible coming together of two teams to compete on the field of play. And ultimately one of those teams prevailed the wrong team because I'm an Auburn fan. (laughs) Sorry if you're an LSU fan, but you know, the, the, the winning team gets the winning score. And if you just see that in the newspaper, LSU defeats Auburn, then you don't get the whole context. And that thing becomes a very narrow kind of laser focused binary thing that on this date at this time, LSU beat Auburn in this game. On this date at this time, the putt rolled in and the score was three. On this date at this time, the cancer won the battle and the person died. On this date at this time, the cancer was in remission and they survived. And if you just look at your life in these binary terms, if you reduce everything down to an outcome or a diagnosis or a feeling or she left or he died or we went bankrupt or he won the lottery. If you just reduce your life to that thing, it doesn't tell the whole story. It doesn't tell the whole story. And so what I want to tell you today is the two halves of your brain attend to the world in very different ways. And we talked about that recently, but the left side of your brain is very focused on a particular detail. You, if you're a bird, we talked about this the other day, if you're a bird and you need to eat, 
your left side of your brain will see a seed on the ground and you'll become hyper-focused on that need to survive by eating that. And you'll need to zoom down there and be able to pick that one seed out of all those blades of grass. You see that one worm under the leaf that if you can have a laser focus and see that thing that you need to survive and you can make your whole life about that one thing that you've got to get or that you've got to do or that you've got to overcome and, and, and everything can be focused and driven to achieve that one thing. That's left side. The right side, though, is equally necessary, but very different. The right side says, wait a minute, if I fly down there right now, look, there's a, there's a hawk over there on that branch. He might come down here and kill me, or there's a person over there on that, on that patio. There's a peripheral vision. There's a whole 3D scape of the world around that seed or that worm or whatever it is that you've got your attention focused on, and the right side adds nuance and context and breadth and and diversity of thinking and it adds this sort of whole experience outside of just the one thing that you're laser focused on and so i would just suggest that if you get those two things out of balance then you're in some danger then you're in some some opportunity for things not to go well for you if you only focus on the the narrow laser focused thing then you might miss out on a whole bunch of meaning and purpose and and beautiful stories and things that you might have missed otherwise but you might get the seed, you might get the prize, you might get the one thing, you might get to write a good score down on your scorecard, but you're going to miss a lot of things. And you're going to find yourself wondering why it doesn't ever quite taste right or feel right, or why it feels like there should be more than there is to your life. On the other hand, if you spend your whole time out there in that broad, wide expanse of context and nuance and all of that, then you may never actually get anything done. You may just sit around and sort of experience and feel, and you may not ever actually be able to feed, you know, find the thing that's going to allow you to feed or survive or overcome or, or deal with the situation. And that's one of the reasons why the right brain, left brain divide is a little bit false because you can't actually just use one. But people that spend a lot of time meditating, for example, and particularly Eastern meditation, the Buddhist meditation, where the goal is to detach yourself from, from worrying about evil and good and all that stuff. And you can surely control and improve your brainwave activity, and you can reach that sort of bliss brain state, and you can spend time out there you know, becoming one with the universe or whatever. But the fact is, when you're doing that, you're not engaging with the real world. And you're not having an opportunity to be moving forward in your life and processing things and deal with dealing with things. So there has to be some sort of balance. You can't just spend your time off in space. And you also can't spend all your time hyper-focused on things and turning people into objects and turning life into a goal of something just to be conquered or some amount of money to be earned or some victory to win or what the final score on the scorecard is. So there has to be some balance. We're treating a whole person. We're treating a whole life. We're trying to come fully alive. We're trying to discover what our meaning and purpose is. And to do that, we have to have a whole brain ideology and a whole system faith that integrates the balance of nuance, context, meaning, and purpose with the practical reality of what we need to do and what's right in front of us and what we have to take care of right now. Does that make sense? That's the expand or reduce idea. So do you spend your time trying to reduce everything down to a transaction, a, a goal, a contest, a competition, a moment, an opportunity to needle somebody, harass somebody, tease somebody, give them a hard time so that you cover up your own insecurities? Or do you spend your time sort of trying to understand that everybody's in the middle of a big, long life arc, that everybody's got a story and everybody's got problems and everybody's got things that they're going through and every moment is potentially the best thing that's ever happened to them and the worst thing that's ever happened is going on at the same time. And you sometimes get to be the deliverer of something that can really turn somebody's life around in this particular moment. Or you can be the one that tips them into having the worst day they've ever had or pushes them to believe that, yes, everybody's always just going to manipulate me or, yes, everybody's always going to just take from me. And you get to choose how you interact with other people. Are they a whole person with a big story, of a big, wide, broad arc? Are they created in the image of God? Are they created to be, to be filled with purpose and to find their way to Him? Or are they a person to be manipulated or an object to be desired? Are they somebody to be overcome or, or competed with or destroyed or 
challenged. What do you think? Is it reduced or expanded? Or is it both? Yes, sometimes we need to focus. Sometimes we need to reduce. Sometimes the moment is in front of us and it's time to pull the trigger and take the shot or do the thing. And sometimes, though, we need to spend a little bit more time thinking about context and and putting ourselves in this story in the shoes of other people. We need to learn to read the Bible with this Lectio Divina idea and with this changing perspectives and looking around in the stories from different perspectives and chewing on the Word and learning and extracting everything we can from it instead of just turning it into a rule book. So reduce or expand is the thought I want to give you today. And in every interaction in your whole life and every time you think about what your day is going to look like and every time you reflect on the things that you've been through try to spend some time in each part of your brain try to get your mind to expand to not just the transaction the moment the detail the inter- the interaction but the whole concept the whole context you my friend are more than a two-dimensional object and so is everybody else that you're going to encounter in your life everybody else is also dealing with context and meaning and purpose and nuance and everything else that God created them to be. And so in your life, if you want to become healthier and feel better and be happier, you have to decide to expand beyond the scorecard to the whole experience of the story that you're living out, of the reason maybe that God put you in this moment at this time to interact with this person in front of you. It's certainly not to see who wins. It's to see what kind of eternal impact you can have on their life and let them have on yours. Because guess what? You're not just a two-dimensional object either. You have a whole three-dimensional, broad, expanded world that you're living and story that you're living. And ultimately, it's to live out the life that you've been given as a gift to glorify God, enjoy Him forever, and find and live out your specific calling on this planet. And why are you here? Expand that universe, my friend. Understand that you're more than just numbers on a scorecard. And on Frontal Lobe Friday, you can change your mind about that. And you can change your life if you're able to do that. And the very good news is that you can start today. Hey, thanks for listening. The Dr. Lee Warren podcast is brought to you by my brand new book, Hope is the First Dose. It's a treatment plan for recovering from trauma, tragedy, and other massive things. It's available everywhere books are sold, and I narrated the audio books. Hey, the theme music for the show is Get Up by my friend Tommy Walker, available for free at TommyWalkerMinistries.org. They are supplying worship resources for worshipers all over the world to worship the Most High God. And if you're interested in learning Learning more, check out TommyWalkerMinistries.org. If you need prayer, go to the prayer wall at WLeeWarrenMD.com slash prayer, WLeeWarrenMD.com slash prayer, and go to my website and sign up for the newsletter, Self Brain Surgery, every Sunday since 2014, helping people in all 50 states and 60 plus countries around the world. I'm Dr. Lee Warren, and I'll talk to you soon. Remember, friend, you can't change your life until you change your mind. And the good news is you can start today.